Right again, we are verifying our trig functions. That means I want to end up with one side equaling the other side. So the first thing we do, again, we have to be methodical, right? It's not that you do the same thing every time, but you can approach these problems the same way every time. Looking at this problem, which side of the equation, which side of the equal sign looks more difficult? The right, I agree, because there's a denominator. It has two terms. So let's go ahead and try and make the right-hand side look like the left-hand side. Everybody with me? <clears throat> All right, in previous problems, if we had two fractions and they had different denominators, we got a common denominator, right? Well, this one doesn't have two denominators. It just has one. What did we do in previous problems? What did we do to start the simplification process here? I have one minus the sine of x. It's not a Pythagorean identity where it has sine squared or anything like that. So what, what should I do to try and start our simplifying process? Multiply by the conjugate. Perfect. I'm going to multiply by the 1 plus because what that's going to do is create a Pythagorean identity. What you do to the bottom, you do to the top, right? So on the top here, <clears throat> some of you did this yesterday and you multiplied the cosine into both. You can do that. I'm just going to write them together. I'm not going to actually foil it in. I'm just going to write them together like this. If you did foil it in, that's fine. You're going to have to end up taking it apart anyway. So just write it to where the two are being multiplied together. Now, when I multiply the bottom, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times the sine of x is plus sine x, right? Negative sine of x times 1 is minus the sine of x. And then negative sine x, positive sine x is minus what? Sine squared x. Great. Have we seen this before? Yes, we've done this like a hundred times. What happens with my sine x is in the middle. They cancel. So I'm left with one minus sine squared x. Do we have a Pythagorean identity that has a sine squared and a one? Yes, the first one, right? So what could I do to that first Pythagorean identity where it says something equals one minus sine squared? What could I do here? Subtract, Subtract the sine from both sides, and I would get cosine, cosine squared. Good. <clears throat> Very good. So I'm going to rewrite the top here. My numerator is cosine x and then 1 plus sine of x over cosine squared x. <coughs> Are we on the road to simplifying? Absolutely. Right? Instead of having a denominator that has two terms separated by a plus or minus sign. I now just have a monomial, just one term. What do you guys notice that I can do here? Can I cross out one of the cosines? Because I have two on the bottom, right? So I can cross off one here and I can cross off one here. So I'm left with one plus the sine of x over cosine x. So I'm trying to get to secant and tangent. Does anybody see anything? How can you go to, how can you look at that right now, Andres, and say, oh, I kind of see it can go to tangent. What can go to tangent? Sine over cosine. Good. Do you see anything that could possibly go to secant? One over cosine. Good, Becky. So, guys, look, we have a fraction that we can separate. Agreed? Can I separate this? I can pull this apart and say one over the cosine of x plus sine x over cosine of x. Keep looking back at your function, your identity of where you're trying to go. <clears throat> Use the secant x tangent x as a guide. I can rewrite 1 over cosine x as secant x. I can write sine over cosine as tangent of x. And is that what we were trying to prove from the get-go? Yeah. Very good. Very good job, guys. You guys look at this right away and you say, it looks like the left one is harder. I agree with you because the left-hand side has two terms in the denominator. The right-hand side only has one, right? <clears throat> Agreed? All right, so let's, let's start working with the left-hand side. Let's see where we can go from here. 
I have one plus cosecant of theta. It's not a Pythagorean identity or anything like that. So what do you think I should do? What should I multiply the denominator by? One minus. One minus, okay. One minus cosecant theta. What you do to the bottom, you do where? To the top, okay. So in my numerator, I'm just gonna keep cotangent theta, cotangent squared, sorry, cotangent squared theta times one minus cosecant theta. Just leave that alone. And now let's FOIL. One times one is? One. One times positive cosecant is plus cosecant theta. Negative cosecant times one is minus cosecant of theta. And <clears throat> negative cosecant, positive cosecant is? Negative cosecant squared theta. Whoops, I forgot. All right, what happens to my cosecants in the middle? They cancel out. Agreed. So I'm going to rewrite my numerator again. I have cotangent squared theta, one minus cosecant theta, over one minus cosecant squared theta. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what? All right, let's look at our Pythagorean identities. <clears throat> one minus cosecant squared, cosecant. Can I do anything? Is there an identity that has a cosecant squared and a one in it? Which one? The third one. All right, the third one. I want this to say one minus cosecant squared. What would I have to do to this third one so it says one minus cosecant squared? Okay, subtract cosecant squared from both sides. So I have negative cosecant squared plus one plus cotangent squared. So now I'm going to do what? Subtract the cotangent. So I have negative cosecant squared plus one equals negative cotangent squared. Is that exactly the same? Yes or no? Yeah. Can I rewrite this as one minus cosecant squared equals negative cotangent squared? Yeah, okay, all right. <clears throat> so I can rewrite this as cotangent squared of theta, right? You guys agree? Okay, so now what happens? My cotangent squareds cancel out, so I have one minus cosecant theta. Hmm. I needed to say one minus sine theta over sine theta. Hmm. Is there a relationship, guys, between sine and cosine? I mean, I'm sorry, sine and cosecant? They're reciprocals. All right. So can I do anything here? Oh wait, should this be negative? Right. So can I do that? You guys agree with that? Did you see what I just did? Yeah. I forgot the little negative sign right here. This should be negative cotangent, right? <clears throat> so when I cancel this out, this whole thing is negative, the whole fraction is, so I just put the negative outside. I can rewrite that as one, what? Positive. Negative one plus cosecant. Hmm, how can I make the yellow look like the right-hand side? Put, over one. Okay. Put this one over one, okay. Can I convert the, say that again? <clears throat> I could do that. I could do that. I could make cosecant. What'd you say? 
so make this one over sine. Agreed? And then I have negative one over here. Okay, you're on the right track. What's another way that I could write the whole number negative one? I can't just square it. I can't just square it. But let's think about this. This is a very hard problem. I understand that. This last step is a little hard. <clears throat> and we kind of went the long way around. No problem. But what is 2 divided by 2? 1. one. What's negative 3 divided by negative 3? 1. What's max divided by max? What's anything divided by itself? It's 1. 1. Can I rewrite the whole number one in terms of sine? Yes. How? Sine divided by sine. Don't you agree that that equals one? Yes. Do those now say the same thing? Can I rewrite, look, can I rewrite what I have in white as positive one over sine theta minus sine theta over sine theta? Can I do that? Yeah. All I did was just switch it. Now look, look at the original, guys. It's one minus sine theta over sine. Can I say one minus sine theta over sine? Yeah. I sure can. And now they are exactly the same. Look at, let's look at it another way, okay? That's, that's, that, that's one way to do it. Like I said, there's a bunch of different ways you can do these kinds of things. Look at this. Let's, let's look at it over here. Okay, it's cotangent squared theta, right? Over 1 plus cosecant theta, right? Did I write that down correctly? And then this side is 1 minus sine theta over sine of theta. Correct? Okay. So sometimes, guys, sometimes you pick, we'll say, quote, unquote, the wrong side to look at. And I don't, I don't mean the wrong side, but sometimes we look at things differently. All right? We all look at things differently, and that's okay. Some of us might look at this and say, I don't know which side I should start on. Let me just try and make both sides smaller. So say you start on the right-hand side. Do you guys agree with me that we can say 1 over sine theta minus sine over sine? Yeah? Are we good there? What does that become? 1 over sine is the same as what? Cosecant theta. And then sine divided by sine is what? Okay. All right, you want one side to equal the other side. You're not changing both sides to be equivalent. But sometimes, again, this doesn't happen a lot, sometimes it's helpful to kind of simplify both sides if they're both kind of hectic looking and then see a roadmap between the two. Let's look on the right-hand side now. All right, we'll do the same thing that we did before. One minus, right? On the top and bottom, one minus. So we end up with cotangent squared theta times 1 minus cosecant. Agreed? And then on the bottom, we foil it out. <clears throat> we came out with what? 1 minus so squared. cosecant. Tough time writing that for some reason. Okay, agreed? And then what did we figure out 1 minus cosecant squared was? Negative cotangent, right? Okay. So what can I do here? I can cancel out here. This becomes negative 1. 1 minus cosecant theta. What do I do with that negative? Okay, so this becomes positive 1. Sorry, negative 1 and then plus cosecant theta, which is what? 
cosecant theta minus one, which is what? Okay. So just say you went that route. Just say you're like, okay, well, wait, I, I, I see it a little differently. You still want your problem to end up with one of the two statements that you started off with being equal to the other one. So if you got to this point and you said, well, look, they're the same here. I would want you to then go one more step and convert. What can I convert now cosecant theta minus one back into? One minus sine theta over sine. Because we can do the same thing on this side, can't we? One minus sine theta over sine theta. Sometimes it's helpful when you have identities on both sides that are extremely complicated. Sometimes it's helpful to kind of work with both sides to see if you can kind of simplify as you go down, do the one side, look and see what you get, look at the other side, kind of see what you get, and then see, oh, okay, look, I see the connection right here. You guys made the connection. And then you saw, okay, look, now I take one more step and it becomes what we started with. Sometimes that's helpful when there's a lot going on on both sides. <clears throat> a lot of the times though, you guys will just stick with the one side and simplify it to where it works in the other. But like I said, these problems are not the exact same every single time. But always try to do something. Yes? You guys oh, agree? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, so we can't end <coughs> everything once we... I would not want you to end here. You're proving, yes, that the one side is equal to the other side. But you want to prove your end answer wants to be one of the things that you start with equals the other one that you started with. One of them equals itself. So your answer should either be cotangent squared theta over one minus cosine, you know, like whatever you start with should be in your answer. Yes, I agree with you that these two are now equivalent. So now take that one extra step to convert it into one of the other ones, right?